Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the most important recording projects ever, fanfare, you know, and all that stuff. Well, this is one that many of you have mentioned, and so you are going to expect it, and I know you're going to expect it, but hopefully I'll still have something interesting to say about it. And here it is. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Yes. The complete Bach cantatas with Harnoncourt and Leonhardt on what was originally Teldeck. I mean, not even Teldeck, it was Telefunken. And then it became Teldeck, and then it became Warner, and it's still Warner. This particular version of it, oh God, is one of its interim manifestations. Uh, it, it's gone through quite a few of them. Now I think the whole thing is available in like a single cube, um, if you're curious about it. But this is this was what it was before it became cubicized. And I, I really, I how do we talk about this edition, how important it was? It was a tremendous achievement, one that nobody thought was even possible. And it was achieved on period instruments um, with period singers, including boy sopranos for the solos, which were only modestly successful. The point was not how good it was. The point was that it was. And some of it is, is very good indeed. I mean, it really is. What was interesting about this series um, for some of us was the fact that, that Harnoncourt and, and Leonhardt had such different approaches. You know, Harnoncourt was eccentric. Harnoncourt was into Baroque rhetoric, into almost a mannered, exaggerated style quite often. Whereas Leonhardt, was austere unto death. You know, he was he was the the you know puritanical Calvinist, you know that kind of stuff. Um, period instrument guy. Not that he couldn't be expressive or whatnot, he was, but his approach was completely different. So as these things were released, there was a vigorous debate about the relative merits of the two conductors responsible for them, which gave it created a very healthy environment for the release of these performances, for the for the debate on, you know, the nature of period performance and the per accepted parameters of interpretation and interpretive license. Because frankly, um, the the irony among, of all of this is that they have such a distinctive personal profile based on their conductors at a time when there was no such thing as a conductor. I'm a conductor who exercised that kind of you know, dictatorial control over what the performers actually did. Because, I mean, you know perfectly well, on Bach's day, you didn't have to tell them what to do, they just did it. And and he concerned himself with the basics of just getting through the performance every week. Um, that was that was probably about as much as he could do. He didn't say, use vibrato here, don't use vibrato there. Well, we have to have a voice soprano here, and we can't have a thing, and we have to do this, and we have to, you know. It wasn't a scholarly enterprise. It was just a practical daily routine. And so, and so it, was this in any way authentic? Probably not, but it was an attempt and a fascinating attempt. The other thing that was marvelous about this thing, I have to put it down before my circulation gets cut off. Wait a minute. Oh boy, it's heavy. Um, the fabulous thing about it um, was that originally when you got the albums, and they were beautifully boxed, you know, LPs with four or three or four or five cantatas or something in a box or six, I don't remember how many. Um, you got the scores. I mean, the scores actually came with them. So you could follow along and see what was going on. And, you know, the Bach cantatas were one of those, it was one of those bodies of work that was honored more in the breach because everyone knew he wrote them and everyone knew there were tons of them and everyone knew we were never going to hear them that there were only going to be, uh, you know, the more popular ones getting done. Now, don't get me wrong. There had been previous Bach cantata cycles and some of them quite extensive. I mean, I mean, Richter did a very big one on archive with, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, some dozens of cantatas. And of course, the East Germans um, in Leipzig, with, you know, the, the Thomaner Corps and St. Thomas's in Leipzig, they did tons and tons of Bach cantatas in the vintage, old-fashioned, modern German style which 
compared to these guys was rather slow and soggy in places, but also sometimes gorgeous with beautiful, beautiful singing. And, you know, I mean, they were art music at that point. It was the art music approach rather than the down and dirty daily routine art music approach. Because make no mistake, this is an art music approach, but one from a different angle of approach. So, so you know, we had known a lot of them. But there was never anything this systematic. And then I need now I need to talk to you about uh, one of the things that I think made this manageable for all of us. And that was something called time. You know what time is. Time is how long something takes. This series was released over a period of years and years, gradually. It allowed us to acquire each volume individually. Notice how I'm slowing down my delivery now. You see, that's time. We were able to acquire each volume, to study it, to savor it, to listen to it more than once, to let it soak in, to give it a chance. We could savor every miserable word of the horrifying, dreadful, depressing, dreary poetry that Bach set to absolutely glorious, sublime music, amazing stuff that was just a torment to look at in terms of poetry. But that wasn't the point. The point is we had time. We had time to take it all in, to, to, to marvel at the diversity of textures and instruments and, and, and all of the things, even within the limited limited cantata medium, which was, you know, an opening chorus, a couple of arias and accompanied recitatives and a closing chorus or a chorale at the end. You know, I mean, there wasn't much you could do with the form, but Bach did everything that was possible to be done with it. And there's just a phenomenal variety within the cantatas. Um, and there was so much to be discovered. And it was Bach. I mean, you know, it was Bach. I mean, Bach with a capital B, the guy, Bach, you know, the one who talked to God, the one who, you know, you know, who was, who was absolutely essential, you know, the, the, the pinnacle of Western polyphonic thought. So here was this series. The idea, on the one hand, that there was so much of Bach that we didn't know. And so, on the other hand, that there was so much of Bach, just so much. Um, it, was, it was going to be a big project. They gave us time to take it in. And nowadays, it's a very different thing, isn't it? Because this, uh, this thing was, like I said, you can get it in a cube without any of the notes, without the scores, without the presentation, without any of the things that made it special. And it's also up there. I have it up there in the Bach 2000. Oh, what's, what, what is it called here? Bach, um, the new, the new, Complete edition, thank you. Well, there's the new complete edition. That's that's a universal thing, J.S. Bach thing. But there's also the Bach Teldeck complete edition. And, you know, complete Bach editions are no longer like that big a deal. We're going to be talking about another one of them, actually, by the way. But it really is, it really is kind of astonishing, uh, you know, how they've managed to take something that was treated and released as an amazing event, a, a labor of love, something that took work and time and thought and turn it into something that nobody cares about. Um, well, I mean, we could still care about it, but turn it into something that essentially has none of that value, that sense of specialness, that, that pioneering spirit. It's all gone. And I miss it. I really, really miss it. But it was still an extraordinary achievement and an unbelievably important achievement and a testament to, to what, what could be done and what the, these people were uncovering and doing and planning on and the, the vision and the ambition and the scope. And, you know, the fact that this was a period instrument thing wasn't really the point. It was, it was a project. It was a glorious project and one that was achieved fabulously. It really was. And it was a landmark, a landmark in the history of recordings. And it, it was from a period and a time when such a thing was possible. I mean, nowadays, if somebody did all of the Telemann cantatas, and there were like a thousand of them or something, who knows, 
um, you know, they would release them all in one box, all at once, and we'd have to talk about it, and nobody would have time to listen to it, and you'd, there's no way you could get through it, because they wouldn't have the commitment over time. Nowadays, releasing records is an act of desperation. You know, you put it all together as fast as you can, you shove it out there, sell it out, and go away, because it ain't coming back. I mean, that's, that's the way they act with it. You know, you don't, things don't stay in print, things aren't promoted, things aren't given time to soak in over time. I mean, seriously, how much time should you give somebody to, to, to suck up to a couple hundred sacred cantatas? Really? It's good that it took decades to do. That's the good thing, but that was dependent on the fact that the label, Teldec or Telefunken or whatever they were, would still be around 20 years hence to complete the project. That's the miracle. The miracle is the staying power um, of the whole project, how they saw it through from beginning to end in a way that collectors and music lovers and, and bacantes, or whatever they're called, bachians, could really take it in. And uh, it's never going to be that way again. Of course, it's all out there. You can do it yourself at home, one thing at a time with the streaming and whatnot. But that's not the same. It's not the same as getting the notes and the score and the, and the, the, the thought and the concept and the, and the explanation and the, the whole experience. It was a wonderful thing and a wonderful time. And this is quite a souvenir. That's why I've, I've hung on to this, even though I have that that Teldec Bach thing and the other stuff, because this, this is a reminder. I don't have the LPs anymore. They took up a lot of space. So I was happy that it took up less space and I have the scores. Well, they're all online. They're available for free anyway now. So what the heck? I have the new Bach edition scores too. So I could, I could look at those if I want. But uh, yeah, it was special. It was definitely one of the most important recording projects ever. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.